Today we're going to start a new video series on the topic of Perlin noise or procedural noise. In this video, we're going to go over what it is and cover a little bit of history about it. Then I'll show you the basics of how you can use it in Unreal. Then in the next couple of weeks, we're, go we're going to go over several examples of how it can improve your materials. Perlin noise is an algorithm that generates a really nice random pattern. What you're looking at here is the results of the algorithm. It's an infinite, non-repeating pattern. This is just one small piece. It goes forever without tiling. It's a pretty boring looking pattern, but most people don't use it as it is. You can take this base pattern and modify it in lots of ways. If you use this pattern as a base, scale it, and combine it several times, you can create a fractal pattern. Each of these combined scale levels is called an octave. Remember that because we're going to talk about it more in a minute. So the image on the right may look familiar to some people. It looks like the Render Clouds feature from Photoshop, doesn't it? Well, it is. Render Clouds uses Perlin noise. You can create all kinds of different patterns of noise by combining the base pattern with itself in different ways. The algorithm was originally developed by Ken Perlin in 1981. Ken was working on the movie Tron and was looking for a mathematical way to make computer-generated surfaces look more interesting. Other people took interest in Ken's algorithm and started using it for all kinds of things. These are just a few examples. Perlin noise is widely used for terrain generation procedural textures, and it's the basis for all kinds of procedurally generated content. Games like Minecraft and No Man's Sky use something similar to Perlin Noise to generate an entire world. Perlin Noise was so widely accepted that it's been used in the special effects of every major motion picture since Tron was released. It's also been adopted into the renderers of every major 3D package on the market. And in 1997, Ken Perlin received an Academy Award for this amazing contribution to the motion picture industry. So, let's take a look at it. This is the core formula for generating the base Perlin noise pattern. This code appears in the book GPU Gems 2 and is specifically written to run fast on modern graphics hardware. As noted at the top in the comment there, this is the optimized version. Now I'm not showing this code because I expect anyone to read through it and instantly understand what it's doing. It's, it's just to give you an impression of the complexity of the algorithm. So when this shader code gets compiled, it turns into about 61 pixel shader instructions and 8 texture samples. And this is just for the core pattern. You generally loop this three or four, even up to eight times to get the pattern you're looking for. So you could be using as many as 488 instructions and 64 texture samples just for a noise mask, just for one part of your material. And right about now, the graphics programmers watching this are going like, So yeah, this is doable, but it's extremely expensive and not something that we can really realistically use all over the place. If you were to put this effect in your game, you would be sacrificing a lot of other things in order to pay the cost for this Perlin noise. We need to find a more efficient way to do it. One solution is to render out a series of slices of the noise in 3D space and create a volume texture. This bakes down the 61 instructions and 8 texture samples into just a single texture sample. Now, obviously, this makes the technique way cheaper, but there are some drawbacks. In order for the volume texture to work, uh, we have to make it tile in all three dimensions. 
uh, which is a, a tricky thing to do. And since it's tiling, it's no longer an infinite and non-repeating pattern, uh, which is one of the key strengths of the algorithm. However, we can hide the tiling pattern by using octaves that don't align with each other. Okay, so the cool thing about Unreal is it has this noise node, which has the fast gradient 3D texture built right into it. If you select fast gradient 3D texture, you're sampling the Perlin noise volume texture instead of doing all of that tons of math and texture samples like we talked about. All right, so let's jump over to Unreal and we'll take a look at what this looks like in practice. All right, so here we are in Unreal and we're just gonna go over the basics of noise. So I'm gonna right click here and add a noise node. And I'm just gonna plug our noise node into base color so that we can see uh, what the results of the default that we're gonna get. So here right away we get kind of this crazy looking noise pattern. And if we zoom in here, we can see that there's a lot of detail to this pattern. Now what I wanna do in order to sample the noise is I wanna pass in the world space position to my position node. And this is gonna use the position of the object or the position of every pixel of the object as the seed for the noise. So let's add our position node. And it's important that the world that the position is in world space in this case, so that the location of the object will determine what the noise looks like. So I'm just gonna plug this into the position socket of my noise node. Now you can see that the noise is still really, really small. And so what I need to do is take this value and multiply it by something to adjust the size. So I'm gonna add a multiply and I'm going to add a constant of 0 0.03. Then I'm going to plug that into my position. And this should scale the size of my absolute world position a little bit, just so that we can get a better idea of what the pattern looks like. OK, so you can see that I've got a pretty nice looking pattern. And what I want to do now is go over the settings on the noise node. So there's a whole bunch of different settings that we get here. So previously I talked about how important it was that we optimize this algorithm so that it wasn't using a ton of math. And you can see here when I drop this box down, there are a bunch of different formulas that are available. And the really nice thing of, about what Unreal has done here is for each of these formulas, they have a nice little tooltip comment that pops up that tells you exactly how expensive it is. The one that we want to use is fast gradient 3D texture. And this works just like I described earlier where they've sampled uh, slices of the noise in 3D space and combined those slices into a volume texture. And then instead of doing tons of math to compute it, they just sample from the volume texture. So you can see here when I mouse over fast gradient, it says it's just doing 16 instructions per level in one texture lookup. Whereas some of these others like gradient here, it's, say, it's saying it's doing 61 instructions per level and eight texture lookups. So that was what I was talking about before. Now, it says it's doing this much per level. And that's important because the more levels you use, the more expensive it gets. So right here it says the default is six levels. So it's still doing six texture samples and 16 instructions, uh, or one texture sample and 16 instructions per level. So if I wanna cut the cost of this down significantly, I can reduce the number of levels. Now if I take the levels down to one and I turn off turbulence, what we're gonna see is just the base pattern that the algorithm generates, or in this case, that the, the, the result that we're getting from sampling our volume texture. The other thing that I wanna point out is it has the output min and output max, or in other words, what the values that are coming out of the output pin, 
Uh, and in this case, it defaults to negative one. So if I don't want my values to go below zero, I can just put a zero here in my output min pin. And then I'll get something that's a little bit more reasonable, a little bit more usable for, uh, for some things. Now, there are cases where you may want to have values that go below zero. And in that case, you can control that with the output min uh, and the output max settings. So here with levels set to one and with turbulence turned off, I'm just seeing the base pattern that the algorithm creates. And from here, I can build up. So if I wanna create uh, the clouds pattern, like the render clouds pattern in Photoshop, I can just increase my levels a little at a time. Let's go with three for now. And what you're gonna see is we get something that's very similar to render clouds. And the more levels I give it, the more detail I end up with in the pattern, uh, but also the more expensive it gets. So if I get up here to six levels, you'll see that my render clouds pattern looks really detailed and I can zoom in on it and it maintains its detail, but it's doing this pattern over and over again six times. And so uh, that's increasing my cost significantly. So let's go back to zero and I wanna take a look at what each of these different patterns looks like. So let's take a look at Simplex first. Simplex is using 77 instructions and four texture samples per level or per octave, like I said before. Gradient is using 61 instructions and eight texture lookups. Fast Gradient, which is the one that you most commonly want to use because it's probably the cheapest, is only doing 16 instructions and one texture lookup. Gradient is doing 80 instructions and no texture lookup, so this is pure math. And then there's also this value computational, which is doing 118 instructions. And it actually doesn't look that great, but you may want it for some cases. And then finally there's Voronoi. And this is like a really unique looking pattern, uh, which is useful in, uh, in some cases, it's creating this uh, cellular structure. Okay, so let's go back to fast gradient. This is the one that's the most performant and the one that you're probably gonna wanna use most of the time. Okay, so I'll increase the levels. Maybe we'll take the levels up to six and you'll see that we get this nice clouds pattern. And then I'm gonna turn on turbulence and you'll see that the clouds become a little bit more rounded and a little bit more like they're roiling. Now, you can do all kinds of stuff with procedural noise. And at this point, you're probably asking yourself, uh, but, but what can I do with this? How can I apply it? And that's what we're gonna talk about next week. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and come back to take a look at next week's video where we're gonna show some applications of what you can do uh, with this cool procedural noise. See you next week.